Hello and welcome to module seven. We're going to be talking about Ethernet switching. Uh, so this is a very important chapter because I would say over ninety, not over ninety-five percent of the wired LAN is connected one way or another to an Ethernet network, if not more. Probably everything, uh, all the LANs. But I'm just taking a guess estimate with a ninety-five percent. All right, so let's talk about the Ethernet frame. I know we discussed this on the last chapter, but uh, just a quick review. The data link layer is broken up into two sub layers, the link logical control and the media access control. So the IEEE 802.2 is the one that's responsible for the LLC and the 802.3, the Ethernet is the media sub layer, media access control sub layer of the data link layer. All right, so remember the LLC is the one that communicates with the upper layers. So the responsibility of the LLC is to take the packet, create a frame and put the packet in that frame. And all it does is put that packet in the frame and put a label on the, this one label on the frame indicating what type of packet that he puts in there. Or sometimes they put in how long that packet was. That's all it does. And then the LLC gives that packet to the MAC sublayer of the um, of the data link layer. So what does the MAC sublayer does? He's going to take the frame, and the first thing he's going to do is going to put the MAC addresses on there, Ethernet addressing. He's going to put the source MAC address. Where does he get the source MAC address from? He gets it from the NIC, his NIC. And he is going to get put the destination MAC address on the frame. Where does he get the destination MAC address on that frame? He's going to send out an ARP request requesting it, which is a broadcast message. He's going to say, hey, whoever has this IP address, please give me your MAC. That's what an ARP request is. The one that's going to reply to him is because he's going to notice his IP address. They're going to reply with um, his MAC address. He's going to take it and place it as... Um, as a destination MAC address. Then, then, what, what, uh, then what the MAC sublayer does is go and take a look at the frame and like kind of and run it through um, a hash program, CRC 232, 32-bit, uh, I think it is, a cyclical redundancy check, and they're going to look at it and they're going to look at how all the ones and zeros are set up in the frame and come up with a number and stamp that stamp that number on the frame and we call that the frame check sequence this is to this is to check the integrity of the frame all right uh, then they'll place the then once that frame is done they'll place it onto the media now if it's an old if you're connected through a hop you probably have to use a cmsa slash cd but most likely to all of today's um uh, ethernet nicks are connected to switches you no longer need CSMA slash CD because each port is directly connected to the switch itself, uh, directly connected to your destination. So there is no need for CSMA slash CD. That's for old legacy Ethernet. All right, so I want you to write down, if you can set this up, this is the Ethernet frame. We're going to discuss each one of those um, in details. So... The first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the data. This is the layer three packet that comes up from the top. That's what the LLC puts in there. And when the LLC puts the packet in there, he doesn't put any of the other labels. The only, other, the only label that the LLC does is place a number in here, a two byte number to indicate what type of packet he put in there or how long that packet is in there. That's all he does. All the other labels on the frame is left for the max up layer to finish up so back in here the packet has to be at least 45 bytes actually 46 bytes to 1500 bytes that's the maximum byte so if someone asked you what is the maximum packet size an ethernet frame can hold and the answer is 1500 bytes what's the minimum 46 i don't know why they put 45 maybe i guess it's 45 it used to be 46. Maybe it's a typo. Anyway, so if it's less than, let's say, 45, you add zeros to it. You pad it up, okay? And 
Then what happened after you, after the LLC gives the frame to the max up layer, the max up layer, the first thing it does, it's going to take the source Mac address, which is from the Nick, place it right here, a 48 bit number. He's going to do an ARP request. Sends this Mac, uh, uh, send out an ARP request, requesting the Mac address of the frame. Once he gets that Mac address, he places it right here. And then what he does, he's going to take it from here to here and run this all, all the bytes, run it through a hash program, and they're going to come up with a number. That number is called the frame check sequence, and you place this number right here. Why is this important? Because when you send out this frame to the destination, the first thing the destination is going to do is going to run the same hash program on this, and the number that comes up should match the one that is stamped right here. If it's not the same number, if they don't match, that means the frame has, has been corrupted or somebody tampered with it. So you drop it and you ask for a new frame. So what is the FCS number for the frame check sequence? This is to um, check the integrity of the frame, to make sure that the frame reached the destination without any problems, right? Reached successfully. Nothing was corrupted, not one bit. Now, in the preamble, what you do is, this is just to indicate, this is really not needed unless you're working with an old legacy uh, Ethernet, you know, 10 megabits or less, the 10 base T mix. Uh, the preamble is 56 on and off, 0, 0, 0, and 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 56 of them. And the start of the frame delimiter, which is 0, 6 ones and a 0. Uh, so this is at the header of the frame, just to let the old legacy frames that there's a frame coming. All right, so uh, moving on. This is in discussion of what we just talked about. Oh, now we're going to talk about, we talked about hexadecimal numbers, right? And let's talk about now the Ethernet uh, MAC address. Where do you get this MAC address on your NIC? Well, what you do is you call out the um, the IEEE, and the IEEE is going to give you <clears throat> 24 bits right here called the organizational unit identifier. And what you, you then you take and then you make up the vendor makes up his own 24 numbers, and when you sandwich them together, you'll get the 48 bit number. So the MAC address is made up of OUI and the vendor's serial number, okay? So please write this down. An Ethernet Mac is 48 bits using 12 hex. You write this bullet point and uh, this bullet point underneath it. The last three bullet points, in fact. All right, so you'll know exactly what the Mac address is made up for. So that's something you have to write. All right, so now let's talk about what happens when we are connected to a switch. So let's say H1, host one, wants to send data, I don't know, to host two. I'm not even going to, you know, the destination is CCC. I'm assuming this guy is CCC. So he will put his MAC address on there, right? This is the packet, remember? And he needs the packet of H3, but he doesn't know where H3 is located. So what H1 does, he sends out an ARP request. He sends out to here, to here, to here. What is that ARP request that has the IP address of H3 in it? He'll say, hey, whoever has this IP address, to H2, H3, and H4, please give me your MAC. So H3 notices his IP address, sends back his MAC address, which is CCCCC. All right, he puts it on the frame, and H1 will send the frame to the switch. What is the switch is going to do? The first thing that the switch is going to do, which we'll discuss in a few minutes, is he looks at the source MAC address and he notices that it's coming through this port. Let's say it's port one. Then in the MAC address table inside the switch, the switch is going to say, oh, this MAC address, AAAA, is located at port one. Then the switch is going to look up the table and see, where is this CCCC MAC address? If he doesn't see anything, then he sends that frame to every port. That's called flooding. H3 is going to receive it, and if they respond back, then he'll know where H3 is located. So that's how 
the switch learns where the MAC addresses are located by inspecting the source MAC address that is stamped on the frame, right? Inspecting the incoming frame from which port they are coming from. All right. Now, remember, the packet is inside. The switches do not go inside the frame, right? They only look at the MAC addresses. All right, so unicast address, meaning you're sending the packet to one frame. So that's how that's what we just discussed before, right? So please write this down. And you unicast is a unique address that's sent only to one device. And you use the destination MAC address, only that one MAC address. A broadcast address is when you want to send the MAC address to everyone. So you want to make sure that your destination is 48 ones. That's what FFF, remember FFFF translates to 48 ones, right? And this is your source MAC address, of course. So please write this down. An Ethernet frame uh, is when you send the frame to all hosts in the LAN, and it should have FFFF as the destination MAC. Multicast address is when you want to send an address to a group of users in the LAN. Not everyone, right? Not everybody gets it. Just these three, for example. So what you do is they should have um, a class D address. This is uh, a multicast IP address. So this MAC address, this address, is also converted in here with starting with 01005E. So if any address starts with 01005E and the last 24 bytes is taken from the destination, converted into hex. And that will be your destination MAC address. And when you send it out, these guys will get it. All right. So these three guys should have the 224.0.0.200 address, um, they should be configured with that multicast address in addition to their IP. All right. So we'll start on the next video with the MAC address table. So I'll see you on the next part of the video. Write down what I told you to write down and submit that as homework. And I'll see you on the next video.